welcome once again to our uh, prayer meeting. Uh, we are streaming our prayer meeting message, but as we've been starting for the last uh, three weeks now, I think, or two weeks, uh, after the prayer meeting message, we we have a Zoom room open at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and another Zoom room at 7.30 in the evening. We thank the Lord for those of you who have been joining us in those Zoom rooms and for those of you who want to fellowship together in prayer, you're very much welcome to join us uh, in that. Let's begin first uh, in prayer and then we'll sing uh, our opening hymn uh, after that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, this time that we could pray together. I pray that uh, you will make this prayer meeting message to be a blessing to all who hear. And I pray that that will create in those who hear this message, Father, just a deep hunger, Lord, for your word. A deep hunger for your word that's rooted in a deep hunger, O God, to know you more. And so I pray use your servant, Lord, as he carries your word. Use it to minister to the hearts of your people and equip them to truly know how to study your word, that through your word we may mature and be equipped to do the good works that you have meant for us to do. And so, Lord, we commit this time to you as we go on with our prayer uh, message this morning and this evening. We commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. sweet to trust in Jesus not that it is without pain sometimes we go through pain but we can take that pain with joy 
when we know that we are simply trusting in our Lord. Let's pray first. Father, we ask that you will open our eyes to behold wonderful things out of your word. We continue to entrust to you our loved ones who are serving on the front line. Please keep them safe. Uh, thank you, Lord, for how you have been doing that. We pray for those among our loved ones who have been stricken ill. We pray for your healing grace upon them. For those who go through no, uh, regular procedures, Father, we pray that you will keep them and protect them. And uh, for those, Father, who have lost loved ones, we continue to pray for your comfort to be upon them. Lord, bless the preaching of your word. Use this to accomplish your wonderful and glorious and good purposes in the lives of your people and those who hear this today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me begin by reading from Joshua 1.8. <clears throat> Joshua 1.8. By the way, as we, as we, before I do that, I'd just like to remind you that starting on Sunday, we will be having what we would call a week of prayer with uh, the Every Ethne uh, Ministry of the ABWE. We would love for you to join that. Uh, I will be uh, repeating this again at the end of this message. But every day from May 31 to June 6, I'll be posting like a prayer picture there, uh, three things to pray for for that particular day, and, and just some other things that perhaps would help you know the state of the churches and God's mission here in North America. But anyway, reading from God's Word on uh, Joshua 1.8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it, day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success uh, beautiful passage there some of you have probably got this down memorized uh, but it's interesting that it says there you shall meditate in it day and night not just so that you will have more knowledge but it says that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it uh, we've began this study on uh, going into the word based on the preaching of the essentiality of the word we're spending quite a bit of time here because i really do believe that it is important for every christian to know how to get into the word because it is through the word that we actually get to know god and even the Lord Jesus Christ in John 17 said, And this is eternal life, that, he, that we may know you, the one and true uh, eternal God, uh, the, the one and true and living God. And so, uh, really, we cannot know God apart from His Word. Uh, our efforts to get to know God apart from this instrument that He has given to us by which we may know Him, uh, if, we, if we try to know Him without the Word, we're just operating on assumptions and we really and really what's going to happen there is we're just going to uh, erect idols in our own hearts in our own hearts and in our own minds so i i think we've been going through this three-step process of bible study observation uh, where we ask uh, what do you see or what does the bible say or what are the facts that you see in the bible an interpretation what do the facts mean or what does it mean? And now we're going to start maybe over this Wednesday and next, next Wednesday talking about the, 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 that part of the three-step process known as application. Uh, let me read to you, first of all, Psalm chapter 1 again, reading from the scriptures. If you would like to turn your Bibles with me. Uh, Blessed is the man who walks not, if you have... If you have your Bible there, put your finger there. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor, seats, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And what does he do there? It says here in verse 2, And in his law he meditates day and night. So look at those two words there. Counsel and meditates. You know, um, if I were to like encapsulate the, the truth that's, that we could draw out from here, is that we learn here from Psalm chapter 1 that our way of thinking 
influences our way of living. If you were to put that into a mathematical uh, equation, our way of thinking equals our way of living. Uh, and that's why, you know, it says here in Psalm chapter 1, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Instead, meditate. Again, you know, thinking. Think about. Uh, immerse your mind in the law of the Lord because our way of thinking equals our way of living. Romans 12, 2 uh, <clears throat> says this, and do not be conformed to this world and notice this, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, what the Apostle Paul was saying here to the Roman Christians was, don't let the world mold your thinking, but rather experience the life-changing, life-transforming power of the Word by letting biblical truth frame your beliefs and your attitudes. Uh, James chapter 1 verse 21 to 25 says this, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, the word of God says, if you just hear the word but you don't do it, you're just fooling yourself. You hear the word, you think you're spiritual because you know so much, but you're not doing it. The Bible says you're just deceiving yourself. And the Apostle James gives an analogy here in verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. But he, for he observes himself, verse 24, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. That's a very wonderful illustration. You know, if, if, if the Bible says that if you're, a, if you're a, just a, a hearer of the word but not a doer, it's like you're a person who looks into the mirror and then forgets right, right away what you, what you look like. And then he says here in verse 25, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. What a wonderful promise. But the idea here is that God wants us not only to be hearers of the word, but doers of it also. In other words, God gave us the word not just for head knowledge, but for life transformation. The Word was given by God not just for information, but for transformation. Howard Hendricks, uh, who has gone on to be with the Lord, said this, and, and I'll never forget this when, when I read it and when I heard it from him in his uh, seminars. He says, Observation plus interpretation minus application is equal to spiritual abortion. That's a very powerful thought. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 uh, verse 1 says that, uh, let, me just, let me just go right to that part of the verse. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1, if I may say verse 1c says, knowledge puffs up but love edifies. If we acquire Bible knowledge just for the sake of knowledge solely, it will only puff us up. It will only fill our, fill our minds with pride, fill our hearts with pride. But the Bible says, but love edifies. In other words, love is what puts knowledge from the Lord into action. To hear and do God's word is how we can really love God and others in such a way that truly delights the heart of God. So how do we become doers of the Word? Let me share a four-step process. 
Let me give an over, overview of the whole process. We will tackle only like, I will tackle like just the whole overview and maybe focus on, on uh, two, the first two and tackle the other two next week. But let me just share this process through four words to help us uh, remember it. First is the word intake. The next word I'd like you to remember is understanding. The third word I would like you to remember is meditation. And the last word I would like you to remember is application. Now, if you will look at this visual here, we'll, we'll go through this four-step process. First is intake. What does this mean? It means that uh, if we are to apply God's Word, first we have to take in the Word. Uh, know the Word is what we mean here. We cannot apply what we do not know. Uh, there can be no app. The, the basis of application is information. Right? Uh, God gave us the word not just for information but for life transformation. But the beginning point is first of all to get information from the Lord. And we get that when we do an intake of the word. And the idea here is that we cannot just make up truth. We cannot make up our own truth. We have to discover it. We are not creators of truth. We find truth through God's Word. And there are two ways that we intake the Word. One is through reading. We read the Word. And second is when we hear the Word. Uh, you know, as we remember in the step of observation, the objective here is to know exactly what the Word is saying. You're not asking at this point, what does the word mean? First of all, what is, we're just asking, what is the word saying? What do I see? What are the facts? That's all. You're not trying to put the facts together there, but you want to put uh, the, you want to make sure that you're uh, reading the word and, underst uh, and really seeing what it says. Now we go to the second word in this four-step process, and the word is understand. Uh, once we know the word through reading it and hearing it, and we know what it says, then now we try to understand it. And the process involved here is study. Study. So if in, if in intake, the process the, the, involved to read and to hear, here in understand, uh, the process involved here is study. Here we put the facts together and understand the timeless truth that God is communicating. We, we learned about this when we were studying about the step of interpretation uh, in the Bible study process. Now just remember this though, that wrong interpretation leads to wrong application. This is why this step is so important. Because if you're interpretation is wrong then your application will also be wrong uh, remember those exams when you were in school before whether it was in in high school or whether it was in college remember those uh, one, one of those exams that really made me nervous was those exams that if you got number one wrong <laughs> if your answer for number one was wrong then all the other answers for that particular a section of the exam uh, would be wrong. Uh, imagine in the days also when there were no GPS, we had to study maps. You had to make sure that you were reading the map right. You had to like orient the map. Like if you're going north, you had to make sure that north on your map was pointing exactly that way or you could orient yourself because otherwise if you were not orienting your map the right way, you could actually be going in the opposite direction. And, uh, you know, uh, if you were traveling in a place like uh, many parts in the U.S. where the exits are far in between, <laughs> that would mean like a lot of expenditure in terms of time and in terms of fuel. Uh, 
on September 1, 1983, many of you remember this, the South Korean airliner servicing uh, the South Korean Airlines uh, 007 was shot down by a Soviet Su-15 interceptor. Uh, the airliner was en route from Anchorage to Seoul, but due to a navigational mistake, uh, the airliner deviated from its original planned route, route and it flew through Soviet prohibited airspace. And the plane was shut down because it was taken to be a U.S. spy plane. Uh, wrong interpretation leads to wrong application. Uh, I've, I've known of people who don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. And one of the things that I've had friends that I, I was sharing the gospel with them, and, and one of the things that I would share with them was in John 20, when Thomas finally saw the Lord. By the way, Thomas said, you know, unless I see the Lord and put uh, my hands into the print, uh, into, the, into the nail prints of his hands and, and of his side, I, I won't believe. And then when he finally saw Jesus and he was able to do that, he cried out, my Lord and my God. You know, my friend who didn't believe in the deity of Christ, he said, oh, well, Thomas was just uh, startled. <laughs> said Thomas was just surprised when he saw Jesus. And so uh, he said that's why he cried out, my Lord and my God. But, you know, if we applied what we learned last week and the cultural background and the historical background and look into that, uh, we would understand that being a Jew... Thomas wouldn't do that. Thomas would not take the name of the Lord God in vain. And even if he did do that because he was surprised, Jesus right there and then would have actually rebuked him for, for doing that, for taking the Lord's name in vain. But Jesus doesn't do that. But instead, he receives the worship of Thomas when he saw the risen Christ and he cried out, My Lord and my God. Uh, I've been reading some articles and I found that in New York there were a lot of people who actually got into emergency because they were ingesting Lysol and other disinfectants because they heard that, you know, Lysol and other disinfectants could kill the coronavirus. Uh, it was a wrong interpretation that le led to a deadly application. Uh, you know, uh, just because Lysol and other disinfectants can kill the coronavirus doesn't mean that you can ingest it or inject it to yourself as a cure because those things are poisonous to your body. They will kill you. Uh, and so there you see the importance of right interpretation because a wrong interpretation can lead to a wrong application. The third part of this four-step process is the word meditate. Now the world th thinks of meditation as emptying one's mind. Now that's exactly the opposite of the biblical concept of meditation because meditation in the Bible involves filling our minds with scriptures. Filling our minds with scriptures. So if you remember Psalm chapter 1, we read that earlier, but his delight is where? and is in the law of the Lord, and in His law, He meditates day and night. Uh, biblical meditation is not the emptying of the mind, but biblical meditation is the filling of the mind with God's truth, with the Word of God. And that's a very powerful truth because God's Word, Scripture, uh, actually reveals to us the very heart and the very mind of God. Now, one of the best ways to practice biblical meditation is to memorize, memorize Scripture. Howard Hendricks again said this, Memorization is the fuel that drives meditation. Uh, memor memorizing Scripture is like looking at the Word of God and looking at it, turning it around in your mind. That's the idea of... of uh, of meditation there, turning it over in your mind, like, what does this mean? Uh, and things like that. And, uh, and, and the idea, another idea of, of uh, meditation is when you 
uh, when you know we, when you want to cook barbecue chicken, you you put the chicken in a marinade, and that marinade just penetrates deep into that chicken or that uh, steak until the marinade is really inside that meat, so that when you cook it and you taste it, you the taste of the marinade is in that meat. That's a beautiful picture of meditation where we allow the Word of God to permeate our minds, our hearts, so to speak, that our lives begin to exude the very flavor of Christ. Memorization is the fuel that drives meditation. But the other thing involved in this step is uh, I would put the word mirror. Uh, you know, I would say mirrorize. <laughs> but the idea here is you look to the mirror, you look to the word as like a mirror to your heart and soul. By this I mean that you look at your life in the light of God's word. Where you, this is that part of meditating when you examine your life in the light of the scriptures. This is what James was talking about. You, you, you look at the Word of God like a mirror to your inner being. Now you look into the mirror to see what's going, what's wrong before you go out there into the world. Uh, whether you're about to go to work, you're about to go to church. How foolish it would be to look into the mirror and then to go out there with the toothpaste on your mouth and with the shaving cream on your face. We never do that. Because what we see in the mirror, we correct it, we make it right if we see that there's something wrong there. That's the idea there. The Word of God is like a mirror to our hearts and souls. It is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart and helps us to know how we can align our hearts and align our lives to the will of God. The Word of God is the mirror of our soul, of our souls, of our hearts. Jeremiah said that the heart of man is deceitful above all and desperately wicked. And then he asked this question in John 17, who can know it? Well, only God can. And it is through the Word as a mirror to our souls that God shows to us the true condition of our hearts. And this is the value of meditation on God's Word. We'll talk more of this in 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 in-depth way next week. And then the last word uh, I'd like us to look at in this four-step process is apply. Application. Here, we obey and do. Knowing without doing equals nothing. Knowing without doing equals nothing. Knowledge as we read in 1 Corinthians 8, only pops up. Now from the parable of the sower, I think we looked at this last week, in Matthew 13, Mark 4, and Luke 8, we see this reality. That the devil is fine with people hearing the word. What he wants is to keep people from understanding it. Because if people don't understand it, it makes it easy for him to snatch it away from their hearts. More so, he wants people, he wants to keep people from doing it, from obeying it. Because when we don't obey the word, we are kept from bearing fruit for the glory of God. And we deprive ourselves of the ancient and wonderful wisdom and up to date wisdom of the Lord. Satan will do what he can to cloud our understanding or to make us delay in applying it or obeying it, or to make us lazy in applying it. Remember the truth that we learned today. Our way of thinking determines our way of living. Belief forms behavior. In Romans 12, 2, as we read earlier, either the world will influence your thinking so that you conform to the world, or you could let the scriptures Form your, belief, your beliefs, your views, and your attitudes as the Spirit guides you into all truth so that your mind is renewed and you experience the life-changing power of God in your life. Now, going back to Romans 12, too, that's a very interesting study in itself. The phrase renewing of your mind is 
is very good to just kind of like think about for a bit there. The, the phrase renewing can be likened to our modern word renovation. The, the destroying of the old to build something new. This is what Christ does when you put your faith in Him as your Lord and Savior. He is constantly making you a new creation in Him. Through His Word, He destroys the vestiges of our old sinful ways. And constantly, He is making us more and more like Him as you take the time to take in His Word, to understand and to meditate on it and to apply it in your life. And the good news is that when you put your faith in Christ who lived and died and rose again for you, He takes up residence in you through His Holy Spirit who then is constantly moving you to read His Word and guiding you into all truth and in doing so, transforming you to be more like Christ as you obey His Word faithfully. So once again, the four-step process of application. Intake, understand, meditate, and apply. Next week, we will look at the nuts and bolts of the steps of meditation and application in the four-step process that we were learning today. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the gift of eternal life and of Christ's life in us through your Spirit who will guide us into all truth as we take the time to take in your word, to seek to understand it, to meditate it, and the Spirit himself will empower us to obey and do it as we seek to apply it. Thank you for this amazing gift that you've given us in Christ. I pray, Lord, that as we take the time every day to feed on your word, that we will begin to apply the things that we've learning and that your spirit will give us joy in meeting you through your word and in prayer. And as we do that, Father, change us as only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, just as an announcement, uh, as we end the prayer meeting, uh, virtual communion this Sunday. Please prepare your bread and your, uh, and your juice as we celebrate the Lord's table or communion this Sunday. And also again, as I mentioned earlier, May 31 to June 6 is the Every Ethne Week of Prayer Initiative by ABWE, an initiative to pray for God's work of church planting and missions in North America. Let's join this prayer initiative starting on Sunday. And every day I will be posting a prayer graphic on my FB timeline as well as the CABC family and friends group account and I will also be sending the PDF prayer guide for the week by email. Please email me if you want to be on the list of those who want to receive this prayer guide. And remember after uh, this prayer meeting uh, message session we will be opening up a Zoom prayer room at 10 o'clock in the morning and then once again at 7.30 at night. We are sending the uh, Zoom links hours apart so that you don't get confused as to which Zoom link, Zoom link is for, for which. Thank you once again for joining us. Looking forward to having you with us again next week as we continue uh, this series of uh, learning to uh, go into the Word of God one of the essentials for life and ministry. God bless you.